With this GameCube, I've got the best of both worlds. Original optical drive still intact and an SD card drive with really easy access. Hi and welcome back to The Shed. I'm Joe Bleeps and following on from my recent Pico Boot video where I showed you how you can use a Raspberry Pi Pico to create your own mod chip and run your games from SD card on the Nintendo GameCube. I've got a new mod today to show you how you can get super easy access to your SD card without even having to open up the console. Let's take a look. Okay, so first I'll explain the SD2 SP2. Now this fits in the bottom of the GameCube. If you've got a Game Boy adapter like I've got here, you'll need to undo these two screws first and then it'll simply eject from the bottom of the console. Serial port two is on this front corner here. You remove the cover and inside I've got my original SD2 SP2. It's a flat PCB with four contacts on either side and an SD card adapter where you can install your games and then run them direct from the console. This new version, in this bag here is the SD2 SP2 Pro. Now, the first thing you'll notice about the SD2 SP2 Pro is that it's not maybe quite as pro as it claims when you look at the print of the name on it. So the SD2 SP2 Pro or the SD2 SP2 Poor. So this part here is very much like the original SD2 SP2, but instead of having the SD card slot on there, it's got these little pin headers. There is a socket on the bottom of the secondary PCB where the two kind of slot together like Lego, and you've now got the SD card adapter on the secondary part. Also, it's an upgraded slot. This one, you just plug the card in or pull the card out. The new one has one of these sort of spring eject mechanisms where you push in to engage and push again to release, which is a nice touch. You'll also notice the shape of this secondary PCB is the same shape as the serial port 2 cover. So you'll see that this one slots into serial port 2 and the secondary PCB acts as a cover to go in place here. Now one problem I had as soon as that went in is that you'll see it doesn't quite fit flush and although I did manage to kind of force it, if you remove this cover altogether and sit it in then it'll kind of stay in place a little bit better but when you come to actually push your SD card that moves this across and it'll wobble that connection there. Also, I found that the connection of the pins, this PCB, is actually very thin, whereas it will plug in place. It's actually very loose. If you look at that where it's plugged in, if I wobble that with my finger, it's a very, very loose connection. Even when I'd modified this so it fits, it still wasn't that reliable. So there's two changes that need to be made. The first modification is the thickness of this PCB is an issue. It's too thin. It wobbles about. You don't get a steady connection on the serial port too. So we need some means of being able to get that to fit in more securely. Secondly, this this is not quite the right shape. So what we want is for this to be a neat flush fit when serial port one is in place. So it doesn't wobble about when we insert or eject the SD card, but we don't want any excess pressure by sort of forcing it into place. We want everything to fit just neatly. So the first modification we're gonna look at is to get this part to fit neatly in place. And that is simply an issue with the PCB itself. You can see there's these sort of zigzag edges on here where it's clearly been part of a, a large assembly with lots of these they have just been snapped apart. So what we need is for this to be just slightly smaller. So you'll see where it's got the text on there and then there's this sort of rectangular outline on here. I'll show you the one that I've modified already and you'll see that on this one, I've come a little closer to the line there. You can't see quite as much black and certainly this sort of textured edge that you get from where it's been snapped off the original PCB assembly, I've removed that altogether and that's really your indicator of where that's gonna go. So the first modification is we're gonna reshape that bit, which is easy to do. The second thing is to make this a little bit thicker what I did is I added some solder to the surface of all of those pads. It just gives that extra little bit of thickness to grab on to the serial port 2 opening. So let's show you how to do that. So first thing we want to do is make this smaller for a better fit. We want to get closer to that white line here without quite touching it. So my modified version, you can see there, I've got it much closer to the line, but you can still clearly see a black and white line there. The indicator is this smooth surface I've got here. So basically you want to trim this down so that there's no evidence of these two little zigzag edges left behind. Once you've got rid of those entirely, you're probably at about the right point for this to fit neatly. And to do that, it's dead easy. You just need some sandpaper or glass glass paper. I used the leftover skateboard grip tape for it. So I've just got a strip here and you can see where I was doing it on the last one there. Just put that down on a flat surface. You don't want to sand it like this because you'll end up just sort of slightly rounding over the edges. You want to keep it nice and flat. So you simply put that down on a flat surface, hold that as upright as you can and just start... <laughs> 
and you'll see that straight away it's already started to get these bumps off here. It will be left with these four or five white lines here and here for quite a while. But you keep going, try and keep it as even as you can. What you want is about the same distance from that white line all the way along. If it starts tilting one way, put more pressure at the other end. Keep going until you've got that nice and flat. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, so that's about ready for testing. I can't see anything more from those lines anymore. That's nice and flat across there. There's no real rough edges here. You can still see that white line there. So it's a good time for me to test it. With the serial port one in place, you should be able to just get that part to drop in there without any wobble at all. I've got it so it just sits flush, but I'm not having to force it in. One thing I'm noticing about the one I've just sanded down, although it will fit that way, it's slightly larger this way as well. So what I'm gonna do is just sand off a tiny bit from on this end. A little bit of light sanding on the side there should help. Okay, so I'll try that now and it just fits neatly in place. You're not having to force it, but there shouldn't be any wiggle. It's getting that just right. Secondly, we've got this part, which is like the original PCB, but it's very, very thin. So when it's in place here, it just wobbles too much. You don't get a very secure connection. So what we need to do is make that a little bit thicker by adding solder to these surfaces on both sides. In fact, you might get away with it on just one side, like I did with this one I tried out first, but I think two, if you're having any problems, will definitely give you a much more secure fit. So so adding solder onto these isn't particularly difficult. You'll need a soldering iron, you will need some solder, and if you've got some flux, that will help the solder to flow a little bit better as well. But basically you need to heat up these metal strips, add a little bit of solder, smooth it out on the surface, and try and get it as even as possible. You're not getting loads on there, you're not getting like a big lump on there, you're just trying to get a sort of shiny extra surface like I've got on this one here. You can barely see it thickness-wise, but you can definitely feel it when you plug it in. Okay, so I've got this liquid flux, so all I need to do with that is just slosh it on the surface there and that will help to clean the area where we want the solder to stick. I just use a straightforward 18 watt soldering iron with a fine tip on it but any should be fine for this job really. So you just got to heat the metal, add some solder, smooth it out across the surface, give it time for it to warm up and then it'll flow a bit better. And the same on the second one, add some solder, smooth it all across the surface. You don't need much solder at all. In fact if you put too much on it'll make it a little bit too difficult to fit into the slot afterwards. If you've got the flux that will definitely help in terms of avoiding any of these bridging like connecting across from one to the next there. So you can see now I've got this little layer of solder on the surface so if I just try fitting that into the slot and seeing how it goes that feels much more secure there's a lot less wobble. So do give it time to cool down before you go put it into the console you don't really want to be putting hot metal inside that serial port it's not likely to end well but once it has cooled it's time to actually plug it into the console and see how it feels. You can do that with this board just on its own before assembling the whole unit. I've now got the neat fit with the other section there, which fits in just neatly without having to remove the serial port one cover. So if I assemble the two together by plugging that in place there, line up with my serial port two, push it in place, that fits securely. It's held really neatly in place. It looks neat from the side there. Everything else lines up neatly. So that's all ready for use. So yeah, it's not the most beautiful looking thing, but considering when you've got it that way around, that's all you can see, it's not a problem at all. I think this is a really nice upgrade and it's well worth doing. If you then reattach your Game Boy adapter, if you've got that, just plug it into the bottom of the console and screw it in here and here. Get my SD card that's all loaded up with games, line it up with the slot, push it in place to engage, and there we go. All ready until I want to add another game to my console, and then I can just easily eject the disc, put it in my computer, put another game file on there, and plug it straight back into my GameCube with minimum hassle. So yeah, they're recommended. If you search on eBay for SD2 SP2 Pro, you'll probably find what you need. I bought mine from China, so it ended up being much cheaper, and I bought a few in one go. But if you're not feeling that patient, you can generally buy them domestically. You just might have to pay it a little bit more but yeah well worth the investment cool little piece of kit and despite the slight inaccuracies it's cool little design too Okay, so seeing as this was my second attempt at doing this, I tried it with solder on both sides to see how that goes. It didn't actually work. It ended up the fit was a little bit too stiff. So what I would recommend is just putting extra solder on the one side and trying that first without it here. If that works, leave well alone. So you may need to try out a few different configurations to see what works best for you. But what I've certainly found works best for me after trying a few different options is to leave this face outside as it was originally. This face inside, add a thin layer of solder to each of those. I would take this first PCB and plug it into the console first, then attach this one in place onto its pins so it just fits flat, but you make sure that the 
these have gone all the way in and that should work okay. If you end up with too much solder, you can either use the soldering wire or you can just heat up the solder and use a solder sucker to suck up the excess. So you're really going for a thin layer on the surface. You shouldn't really see much in the way of lumps and bumps on there. So there you go, the SD2 SP2 Pro. It does exactly the same thing as the original SD2 SP2 for the convenience of being able to just grab your SD card without having to turn your console upside down or remove the Game Boy Player. That convenience really makes it a worthwhile upgrade. And I know it's not perfect from the off, but with those few simple modifications, it really is a nice, solid, reliable piece of kit. So I've had mine set up on this for about a week now. I've removed the card and put it back in a few times just to check, and I've had no problems at all since doing those slides modifications. I think in addition to all of the other modifications I've done on this GameCube and in the absence of the GC loader which I can't afford and haven't got and I do like to keep access to the original disk drive I think it's a really really good addition to the little suite of mods that I've got on there so yeah I'd recommend it. If you try it out let me know how it goes. If you've enjoyed this video please leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you want to see more like this and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.